The new One UI version 5, Android 13, is now available on most Samsung phones. This update includes a bunch of cool new features. In this video, I'll be sharing my favorite features. Hi, I'm Orman Beckles. I always get excited when there are big updates for my phone. The new features in this update can make it feel like you have a brand new phone. Be sure to stay till the end of the video, where I'll show you how to get this wallpaper absolutely free. Widget stacking is a great new feature. What this allows you to do is to take any widgets, any number of widgets, and stack them on top of one another. Let me give you an example. I might normally have Samsung Music, and I would take that widget, and I would have that on my screen. And then I might also have the play bar for YouTube music because sometimes I use that. So I would have two widgets there and I might even have a third or a fourth or a fifth widget. What I'm able to do is stack these on top of one another and I do that by simply pushing and holding and dragging that onto the other widget. So I'm just going to do that and Bob's your uncle we're all set. To switch between these two widgets I just slide back and forth between those two. It could be any number of different things. For example, I have another screen where I have email and I have a calendar, but I don't really need to see both at the same time. I Before I put the calendar up here and the email down here, now I can have two big full screen widgets and just put them on top of one another. It doesn't make a difference what the widget belongs to. Text extraction is another neat feature. It allows you to copy text from any image. I'm going to go to an ad from the 1970s and this is a recipe for hot cling peaches and Miracle Whip salad dressing. Don't know that I'm going to actually make this. However, if I did, normally I'd have to print this out and I'd have to figure out what I'm doing. Now all I have to do is put my finger and hold it on the image and I'll have the same text selection tools that you would have at any other point in time and I can either drag and drop, or I could say select all. I'll now hit copy. I'll go to a blank document and I'll click paste. And there we go. I now have the recipe for hot cling peaches and Miracle Whip salad dressing. This next one is one that I didn't know I needed it until I used it. And then I realized how much I needed it. And that is you can now add the name of your icons in your edge panel. If you're like me, you have an edge panel and you have all of these different icons. And as you can see, there are no names under the icons. And normally that's not a big issue. You can usually figure it out. But here's a great example, which is what the heck are these icons? I have two buddy and then one of them's for YouTube and then one of them's for YouTube studio and then one of them's for YouTube music. And I'll be darned if I can remember sometimes in the middle of the night, it's like, uh, this one is YouTube Studio or that. So now we can solve all that. We just click on the pencil. We click on the three dots. And now it says show app names. We go ahead and we click on that. And go back one. And Bob's your uncle, the names are right underneath of the icons now. And as I said, if you have a bunch of icons that look similar, or if you're using some of the new themes where it changes the icon and it may not even look like what you're seeing here right now, the name on underneath of the icon is really going to help. As a former IT tech, I can certainly relate to the British comedy series called The IT Crowd whose catchphrase is always, have you tried turning it on and off again? And that's because a lot of times things can be fixed by just turning them off and turning them back on again, giving the, the device a chance to refresh. Well, we now have a way for that to happen within the phone itself. The new feature, auto optimization, basically does that. It's gonna just restart your phone at an appropriate time. Go into settings, Go down to battery and device care. And if you scroll down, you'll see auto optimization. And it says a lot, but basically what it's saying is at some point in time when it feels it is the right time to do it, 
it will turn the, the phone off and turn it back on again. Now, there was a feature in here before to do that. You said at 3 a.m., but maybe you're up at 3 a.m. So this will now use AI to figure out when you're using your phone, when you're not. It's probably going to be around that time of night. However, if you're up, if you're using it, if you're in the middle of doing something, it will not turn it off then. It will wait until you're done and then turn it off and come back on. And so by just doing that simple turning it off, turning it on again, a lot of things can be fixed. The gallery has a couple of nice changes. The first one is you now can select which albums to show and which albums to hide. As you can see here, I have just a few albums and these are the ones that I use most often. However, if we were to click on view all, We'll see all of the albums, a lot of these I don't need to go into. They may be set up by another program or they may be stickers and it is difficult to find what I'm looking for. Go into gallery, click on the three dots and then you can select albums to show. At that point you go through, find an album you want to see, for example, screen recordings and Filmic Pro. And then those are the only ones that you'll see. Another improvement is the recent folder. And this will show you the most recent photos, videos, whatever you've done recently. And this is a big time saver. I might download something and then before I have to figure out why is it in download or is it in screenshot or wherever it is. So it stays in the folder where it's supposed to be. However, I can find it by simply going into recent. This is not a new feature, however, it is an underused feature. I do want to point it out, and that is called Remaster. Let's take this picture we have here for our good friend Cesar Romero, and I will click on the menu button, and I have an option here called Remaster Picture. And what this is going to do is use AI to sharpen the lines, try and remove the noise. Let's give you a little before and after. Here's the before and I'm gonna slide the after, and you can see this side looks like there's some kind of a film on it. This looks a lot cleaner, a lot sharper, and it's very easy to use. It's one step and you're able to use it. So I really like that. You can see up here it even sharpened up the words, made the lettering a little, a little punchier, a little brighter. I love to use Remaster. Another feature that's not a new feature, but again underutilized, is the portrait feature. Let's go in, let's click on Add Portrait Effect, and what it's going to do is find the face, make that nice and easy for us to see, and it's going to kind of blur out the background. As you can see, this kind of got blurry. Here he is, really stands him out from the background, so if you didn't take a picture in portrait mode, using the portrait effect, which gives you that depth of field, you can apply it afterwards by using that add portrait effect. Another new feature is the line straightener. And if you go in and you click on your pencil and you make a line, that's how it normally would be. However, if you now make that line and then hold it for a second afterwards, you'll see that, boop, it will straighten it out for you. Same thing with circles. If I make it, let's actually change the color here. If I make a circle, that might be how I made a circle in the past. Now I'd make a circle, hold it, boop, and it will actually figure out what shape it's closest to and actually snap it to that particular shape. That's pretty good if you're trying to maybe do something like that, okay? Hold it, boom, straightens it right out for you. Things like arrows where before you would have drawn these really kind of crazy arrows, it's much easier to make arrows and things now. This is a small one, however, it is worth noting if I go into settings and go down to about phone, it will now show me an image of the phone I'm using plus the color. Not a big deal, it is nice to see. I also like that it does show me here the model name because sometimes when you're loading software from another place, let's say like the Play Store on the web, it'll say, 
do you want me to load it on SM-N986U? And you might be going, which device is that? Just a nice little touch. These next ones have to do with the pro camera mode. Some people don't use the pro camera mode because they're intimidated by the word pro. Let's go into pro mode. One of the cool things that they've added that when you click on an item, you'll now see a button that says I. And if you click on that, it will tell you how to use it. It'll say, for example, here's the ISO or here's what the speed is. Reading those will give you a better idea as to how to use the pro mode. The next one is the histogram. And just think of that as a little game. We want to keep as much of that in the middle of that box as possible. When we make changes, if we see what happens there, we'll move that too far down and all right, in this particular thing, we've made it too far up. You can use this as a good indicator as to whether you've enough light or not. And in this particular case, what you're seeing is because I've changed the speed in terms of how many frames per second, it's actually catching the refresh rate on the monitor. And that brings up another feature that you now have in the pro mode, which is it is what we used to call in the old days WYSIWYG, which is what you see is what you get. You can now use this and know exactly how your photo or your video is going to come out before you actually hit the record button. Things like the white balance, my walls are white, my chair is white, and that's closer to what it should be. But again, for the walls, I might want to go up a little bit higher to compensate for the light. You can see all of that before you actually record. I've done a video on the record video modes and I'll put a link to those above. You can customize your contacts a little more now. I'm going to go into contacts. I'm going to add Admiral Harriman Nelson. And even though it was three different parts, it was able to put in all of the information. You may have been familiar with the fact that you could go in and select any picture from your gallery as the picture that would be displayed on the contact sheet. We can do a couple of other things. The first one is if we go into edit, you can go to custom call background. And what that's going to do is allow you to select either an image or a video that will play when that person calls or when you call them. For example, click on call background, click on background, and it will show you the ones you've already created, or you can click on the plus sign, click on gallery, and choose anything from your gallery. I'm gonna pick this one right here, and now that's what's gonna play every time Admiral Nelson calls us. And you can go one step further, is click on ringtones, and you can actually pick a specific ringtone for each individual and that comes in pretty handy when i'm taking a little afternoon siesta and my phone rings i don't have to look to see who's calling i can simply listen to hear what plays and that will tell me who it is so in this case we'll pick sub sona so when Admiral Nelson calls us or we call Admiral Nelson, we'll get that nice call background and we will also, when a call comes in, we'll hear that custom ring. As promised, here is how to get this amazing wallpaper. Just visit my website and at the top of the screen, you'll see a link marked free wallpaper. Which feature do you like best? Let me know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, the join button for memberships. We need to get to 25,000 subscribers and we would appreciate your support. Until the next time, this is Ormond Beckles, the high-tech nomad signing out.